Did you know that it is possible in Excel to build dynamic search boxes that filter your data in real time as you type? With the new Excel filter function this has become really easy and it allows you to create an amazing user experience while searching and filtering your data and I'm going to show you how to do this. This tutorial is divided into two parts. In part one I'm going to show you how to implement this real time data filtering with a search box from scratch and also how to implement different search modes. We will implement all these side by side and at the end I show you how to combine them into one search result area for which you can simply select the search mode via a drop down list. And to keep it simple, part 1 focuses on searching in one fixed column. And in part 2 we will take these learnings from part 1 and I will show you how to do this real time search in multiple columns, either via single column selection, multi column selection, and even with multiple search boxes. So just follow me along. As a side note, I'll put the link for the download of this worksheet in the description. On the left side you can see a small dataset consisting of three columns, name, region and sales. The techniques I'm going to show you become more powerful the bigger the dataset is, but for making you understand the different techniques, a smaller dataset is obviously the better choice. Now let's assume we want to filter and search this dataset by region. So we have a search term, let's take US and put it up there into this field. Now to filter out all rows that have US as their region, all we have to do is select this top left cell and insert a formula with the filter function. Since the filter function is a so called dynamic array function, it is enough to only insert the function into this one field and the results will then be spilled into all the surrounding cells. The filter function has three arguments. The first one is called array and in there we have to put the return array, so in our case this is the whole dataset without the header row. The next argument is called include. And for this argument Excel expects an array with one boolean value, so either true or false per row. In the basic approach where we only check for exact matches, we simply select the lookup column and set it equal to the search term. And with the third optional argument we can define a message that is displayed in case we have no matching result. Let's hit enter and as you see the filtering works perfectly. All rows with US as their region are displayed and all other rows are left out. The formula is only in the selected top left cell, but the dynamic array is spilled into all the surrounding cells. Let's change the search term to Canada and we get another correct filtering result. To make you better understand, let's have a quick look at how this filter function actually works. For that we're gonna cut out that include argument which is the filtering condition and put it into a separate cell. What this returns is a true or false value for each row in our data, based on if the region value matches the search term or not. We only get a true value for the rows with Canada. And then what this filter function does, it ignores all other rows and maps these positive rows into one dense array. I hope that makes it easier to understand for you. Now how do we transform this simple search field into a dynamic search box that checks for matches in real time as we type? It is actually pretty simple. We go to the developer tab, which you can activate in the Excel options menu and click on insert and under active X controls we choose the text box and insert it right on top of our search field. Now to connect it to the underlying cell, we right click on it and click on properties which opens this beautiful window. Look at all these properties we could adjust but actually we are only interested in one specific property called linked cell because we want to set this to the underlying cell which is F3. As soon as we hit enter the text box is now linked to the cell and displays the value of the cell. To demonstrate this real time connection let's put this text box over here and leave the developer design mode. Now everything we type into this text box will be entered not only typed but really entered into the linked cell. So the filter function automatically updates every time we type a letter into this text box. There is no longer the need to hit enter. As soon as we type the letter S of US, all the matches are displayed. That is pretty amazing. So let's go back to the design mode and move our search box back on top of the search field. 
This real-time filtering is already pretty helpful, but a big problem with this implementation is that nothing will be displayed until we have entered the full search term and get an exact match. In most use cases, however, we want to have all rows displayed when we have no search term entered. And as soon as we hit the first character of the search term, we want to dynamically filter down to all those rows that somehow contain the search term in the search column. For that, we need to implement partial match. So let's do that in a separate area. To implement the partial match, we can basically copy over the filter formula from the exact match area. And now we only have to rewrite the include condition. With this simple logical task, we only checked if a value matches our search term exactly. And if not, it returns false. For the partial match now, we have to create a formula that only returns false if the search term that we enter is not contained in any position of the considered word. So we need two functions here. The outer function is the isNumber function, which returns true if the inner value is a number. And the inner function is the search function that returns the position of a search term in a search text as an index number. When we hit enter, it seems like it already works good for exact matches. But let's remove a character. And as you see, even if we didn't write the word Australia completely, it still displays any row which has Australia as a region. Let's enter another search term into the search box. A simple U, and that instantly filters down to all rows with a region that contains the character U at some position. It doesn't have to be the beginning. Now, if we add the S, only US and Australia are left because both contain US. And if we add another T, it is only Australia. And the same happens if we enter an E. Only Europe is displayed because no other region has the letter E in it. Amazing. You see, this partial match formula is a big improvement over the exact match formula because we get all relevant results displayed in real time. For those interested in how this inner search condition works, let me quickly demonstrate. Um, for this, I'll put it in another cell. You see, we search a term in a one column array, and as soon as we hit enter, it returns the index where this search term has been found for each row. Currently, our search term is nothing, so it returns a one, which is a good thing because for that reason, all results are displayed. As soon as we type in something, this changes because now all rows for which the region value doesn't contain this letter, here this is the case only for Canada, this function returns an error. And if we then put this into the isNumber function, this translates into a false and the row will be ignored by the filter function. For Australia, you see, the return index is 2 because the letter U is found at the second position in the word. And that is perfectly fine because the isNumber function doesn't care and still returns a true for this too. Just to demonstrate you that, let's add the isNumber function around the search function like we did in our complete filter formula. And you can see all values are true besides the ones that displayed an error. Now, in some cases, we don't want to make our search box display all rows that contain the search term at any index in the search column, but only those that begin with our search term. That means if we type in the letter U, we would only want US to be displayed because unlike Australia, US begins with the letter U. How do we implement that? As you have guessed right, we need to change the include condition one more time. So let's do that in another separate area so that you can watch all three different behaviors. We're gonna copy over the filter formula from the partial match, but we will fully replace the include condition with a completely new formula. We now apply the left formula to our search column because this left formula returns the first few characters of each region value. The number of characters can be specified as the second argument of this function and since we want to dynamically consider a part of the region word that has the same length as our search term, we simply enter the length of our search term in F3 using the LEN formula. And then we close the left formula and compare the returned array to our search term in F3. So what basically happens here now, when we have the letter U entered, the length of the search term is obviously 1. So for each row we check if the first letter of the region value is the same as our search term. Let's hit enter and as you see, now only the rows with U, S as region are displayed just like we wanted.
The partial match, on the other hand, still displays two other regions that have U at some inner position in the word. And also if we type in the full search term US, the partial match still displays more regions than we are most likely interested in. If we enter an A, the partial match also displays Canada, while the partial left match only displays Australia. As soon as we type in U, both display the same. And finally, when we enter the whole search term, the exact match also displays something. Now, as we compare these three search modes, you might think, okay, partial left match is always the better search mode. But that ain't true for all cases. It is obviously the best choice if our search column only has one word values like the region column. But what if we would take a look at the name column? Here we now have a first name and a last name for each person. But it would be more than realistic that we only know the last name of people and this is where the partial left match would perfectly fail. Let me show you. How do we quickly change the search column here? Right now we always reference B9 to B24 in all our filter formulas. A quick way to change this for all three is using the replace tool, which we can open with Ctrl H. We simply type in B9 to B24 and replace it with A9 to A24 for all matches. At this point I have to say this is not an elegant way to switch the search column. And you will learn a way more elegant way of quickly switching the search column with only one click in part 2 of this tutorial. But just for demonstration right now it is perfectly enough. We get a message that says that our replacements were made. And as we check our formulas we see the search column has been changed to the name column in our data for all the three search modes. Perfect. Now let's type in a full name. When we type in the name completely, all three search modes display the same unique result. When we take away the last letter, exact match is out of the game. But both partial matches are still in it. However, if we remove the first name as well and only type in the second name, partial match is the only one displaying the wanted result while the partial left match rule was too strict for this one. So if we compare these search modes, the partial left match is perfect for real-time search box filtering but still a really strict search mode. While the partial match is just as perfect for real-time filtering and more robust and displaying more results. The exact match doesn't seem to be the perfect fit if we want to display all matching results as we type, but it still might be relevant for some use cases in which you only want to have something displayed if it perfectly matches and not be overwhelmed with all sorts of partial matches. So to summarize it, each of these search modes might be the best choice depending on the situation and search column. So wouldn't it be great to have one single search and result area and be able to set and switch the search mode with one click via a drop down list. Let's quickly build that in another sheet. We simply duplicate this worksheet with a right click and the move or copy option. Then we select move to end and create a copy. And there we have our duplicate worksheet which we rename into search box, select search mode. We want to insert that drop down list right below our dynamic search box. So let's write search mode, select the cell and go to the data tab to set up a data validation. In there we change the allowed values from any value to list. And now in the source field we would either select an area in our worksheet or directly type in a list of values which is the cleaner choice in our case. We simply enter the names of our three search modes and confirm it with enter. And now there we have the drop down list where we can select and switch between search modes. But of course we still need to adjust the formula to behave based on which search modes we selected. We gonna transform this first result area into our single search result area. The best function to check which search mode is selected in the drop down list is the if as function. This is a relatively new function available since Office 2019. It checks if one or more conditions are met and returns a value that corresponds to the first true condition. So with this function we can easily check for each of our search modes, one after another, if it is the value that is selected in a drop down list. The first logical test is F4 equals exact match. 
If that's the case, we want to return the filter formula that was in here for the exact match. If that's not the case, do another logical test and check if f4 equals partial match. If that's the case, we want to return the partial match filter formula. Let's put in a placeholder value for now, go to the partial match cell and copy over the formula and insert it. Beautiful! And now for the third test, we copy that partial left match formula, insert the logical test f4 equals partial left match, and insert the formula as the return value. We hit enter, and now we are ready to delete these two areas because we don't need them any longer. Let's do a final check. First, for no search term entered in the search box, That seems to work correctly for each search mode. And now if we enter a name, remember we are currently searching in the name column. It works correctly for the exact match mode. If we do the same with partial match and only enter the first two letters, you see it displays three results, one of them containing the CH in the middle of the name, while the partial left match applies a more strict filtering just as we expect. Perfect. We have now successfully created a dynamic data search box that allows us to select the search mode we want and then search our data and display results as we type in real time. Now, if we want to switch back to the regions column, we would have to use the replace tool, which is a huge manual effort. So I recommend to continue with part two of this tutorial, where I show you an elegant way to select the search column dynamically we are a drop down list. And even better, how to search in not only one, but multiple columns at the same time, either with one single dynamic search box and check boxes to include and exclude search columns, or by using multiple search boxes, one for each column. Just to remember you, the worksheet for this tutorial is available for download on excelfind.com, link is in the description. Click right here for part two of this tutorial. And if you enjoyed this first part, don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. Cheers!